Welcome to Making Change Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Reed, and joining me tonight is Joanna Ormisher, President and CEO of Arts Herndon. Thank you so much for being here, Joe. Thank you very much for inviting me. So I think people can probably get from hearing you in the first <laughs> few minutes that you're not from around here. I'm not. And neither am I from England. I'm Welsh. Welsh, yes, which is... Let, a, let's get that straight. It's yeah. a whole different thing. Absolutely it is. Absolutely. Um, and it's we, we are noted in Wales for, for being artistic, for liking uh, music, song, dance, the spoken word especially, obviously Dylan Thomas. Sure. So, um, you know, with all that being said, I'm here. You're here. And so you crossed the pond mm -hmm. low 19 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, I don't know, what was your expectation? That you'd have a 19-year career, 19 year career in the arts? No. Oh, well, it was funny. I had a career in the arts back in the UK. Uh, but I expected to come here for two years and then go back again. Well, that was... It'll be 20 years this year, so wow, guess what? 20 years. I, yeah, I don't know where it goes. So you and I met um, actually in Fairfax City, where I have lived for many years, yeah. and you were very instrumental in the arts programs there. Mm -hmm. um, Spotlight on the Arts has been one of the marquee events in Fairfax City, supported by the community. And I guess I want to talk about, you know, the community support for the arts and how integral the arts are to every community. It, it's not optional. No, it isn't. Uh, well, just I'll back up a little bit. In in the UK, I had my own marketing company, uh, working in downtown and shopping centre marketing, but also in the arts. And I quickly realised that they marry well together. They work. They work. You you put a, put arts as a sort of you know. A centerpiece. A centerpiece, yes. That's a great idea. That's a great word, actually. It's a centerpiece. And you use it for marketing uh, any of the events you've got going on. You've only got to walk into shopping centers today and see somebody sitting there playing a guitar for children, you know, and dance, all sorts of things. Everything that gathers an audience that people want to watch, want to talk, listen to, uh, and that's the arts. Everything is the arts. Um, you know, you, you do pop-up theatre, you do pop-up um, art galleries and so on. Um, and so that's actually what I was doing. I brought that from the UK over here with me. Um, I, I did something in the UK called um, Art in Open Spaces, and I was ruthless. <laughs> if anybody had an empty shop, I, I didn't want to see it empty. I oh, wanted sure. something in there. Um, and and. That's one of the things I brought to to the city of Fairfax. Um, and you did a lot of things. You were, oh, yes. you were instrumental. First of all, it's the arts, but it's also public art. Yes. You know, it's having pieces yes. of public art. You did amazing things around Earth Day yes. that involved children, children, you know, and art exhibits at the, um, uh, the city council, you know, and mm -hmm. so that you people coming in for a city council meeting also got to see an exhibit. Mm -hmm. So you... We're, you know, instrumental in putting art where people already were. Yes. And I think that's the key to it. And the, the other key to it is because I was a one man band. Simple. Um, and basically you work with partners. You've got to work in partnership. And you're talking, you're rightly so, talking about the, um, the art in... Um, the, in Town Hall. We worked on Earth Day and sustainability. The sustainability committee there, Judy Fraser, very, very strong. And we would work with the schools and get all the schools. Then we'd put out an art show. Um, and we did it. Ev and through Spotlight on the Arts, we were able to be experimental, innovative. We could do things. Um, I mean, for the very first time, we had a theatre in the town, in Old Town Old Hall. Old Town Hall, I remember, Rem on the first floor. Remember the yeah, first one? And it was, people said, you can't do it. Well, with the City of Fairfax Theatre Company, yes, we did do it. And they were very inventive as well. And people were just flabbergasted. So now we're into the, I think this year was the fifth year of doing it in, you know, doing a theatre in Old Town Hall. I mean, at any given stage during Spotlight on the Arts, one year I had six theatre groups in various places, um, in empty shops, in, in Old Town Hall, um, sort of doing open air stuff as well. And then likewise galleries, because we do pop-up galleries. Right. You know, 
empty shops. I can use them. Thank True. you. True, and you did. And, <laughs> yeah. and and there's also art in the Sherwood Center. The, you know, there's always, you know, I, I think you were very effective in finding spaces to hang art, all kinds of yes. artists' yeah. art. You know, and I have to give a shout out, you know, when Bright Paths, and I sit on their board, decided to do as a fundraiser a juried art show. Yeah. And you made it very easy for us as a nonprofit to become part of Spotlight on the Arts. That was see, very innovative. But that's cause-related marketing. That is powerful, powerful stuff. And Bright Paths are such an amazing bunch of people. And to be able to work with Bright Paths and yourselves, you know, it, it was just it was just magical because we could do it and because we could touch so many people, Catherine. I think that's the whole object of the arts. We touch people. People come out. I've got, I mean, I just showed you the picture yeah. earlier. I've got a young man. He's from Fredericksburg. He's, he is painting old, repurposed, reclaimed, repurposed, reclaimed, repurposed whatever, <laughs> uh, skateboards, p things that people are going to throw away. And he's, he brought th some in to show me and in fact show one of the members of my board and she liked it so she sent him over to me I looked at it and thought whoa yes and they are tremendous you know this tremendous use of resources and that's what we've got to look at and this makes me think when I had um, Alex Bulova and Sarah Mark Steiner mm -hmm. on the radio show a couple of weeks ago and they're doing two original one act plays at the Lorton Arts Center this weekend yep. we're going on the fourth and one is called um modern art and the other one's called I Hate Modern Art. And the one that Alex wrote is um, a story that really at the heart of it comes down to who decides what is art and who decides who gets to make art. Mm -hmm. And to me this is such a fundamental question. And when you've got somebody painting skateboards yeah. and saying this is art, you know, that is to me what we should all be asking ourselves what is art? Who gets to make art? And in your case, who gets to curate that art? So for those of us who are just joining our show, this is Making Change Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Reed. And joining me is Joanna Ormisher, who is the president and CEO of Arts Herndon. And so another thing that I want to touch on is the international um, aspect of this. You did, again, when, when you were in Fairfax City, there were Irish, there was an Irish festival. You know, you had, there's so many cultures represented in Northern Virginia. Oh, huge number. So to huge. make sure that people yeah. find a space yeah. to, to either create art or see art or performances that are reflective of their culture, super important. I, I, I mean, essential. I mean, I, as, as you say, I've moved from the city of Fairfax. I'm up in the town of Herndon now uh, with Arts Herndon. And it has got the most amazing demographics. Uh, it's 33.7% uh, white Caucasian, 33.2% uh, Hispanic, that's Hispanic right. and Latino, 19.2% Asian. That's enormous. Those that, are big numbers. Those are very big numbers. And then if you start breaking down into the various pieces, and, and I, I see it, I... I mean, I see it every day. I mean, I, I saw a, a, three people this morning who were Chinese. They didn't speak English. I spoke, speak a very small amount of Chinese. Uh, but boy, Google Translate helped us out enormously. And we, I was able to take them where they needed to go. And, and we just had a great time meeting with each other. Uh, I came back through, through town and sort of bumped into sort of other people of other nationalities. And like, I'm like them. I'm another nationality. True. And people you know? can tell by yeah. listening to you, not necessarily by seeing you down the sidewalk. No. But no. the minute you say, Hello. good morning, yeah, right, <laughs> they get it. Yeah. And I think that's, that's what I really enjoy about being in Herndon um, is this total, um, I don't know what you want to call it, a Malay. It, it's a total mix of nationalities. I mean, you look at our town council. We have a Nepalese uh, True. town councillor. True, you do have, have, a very, you have uh, a lot of diversity on your town we council. We certainly do, and he and I are going to do a project. Uh, Ross, who is the, the former ambassador to Nepal, uh, and I are going to do a pop-up gallery of Nepalese art. Wow, um, and that will be coming up fairly soon between between now and the end of the year. I mean, 
hello, where else do you get to do Nepalese art right. and show it in Northern Virginia? Um, well, you bring up something that's important too. So I was born mm. and raised in Southwest Virginia in Roanoke. And most people think that's the back of beyond because it's rural Southwest Virginia. But when I was growing up in the 1970s, we had the Roanoke Symphony Orchestra, we had the Roanoke Opera Company, we had the Roanoke Ballet Company, we had the Civic Center for traveling Broadway shows, we had a lot of local community mm -hmm. theater. And here's the thing, it was accessible to people because it wasn't the Kennedy Center and it wasn't Broadway. So people got to go to the ballet and the symphony and to see good live theater because it was a small town. Yeah. And yeah. so, so you are, through your efforts, and Herndon is not a big place any more than Fairfax City is a big place. Mm -hmm. But when you center arts as the part of the fabric of the community, yeah. not only do you give um, artists and performers a chance to do those things, but you are making ex accessible, art accessible, without having to go into the city or any city to a gallery yeah. or to a Broadway show. And, and I think... What I see, and I mean, I do it myself. I've come to you straight from work. I mean, we all work longer hours. True. And, you know, the thought of sort of getting, sort of jumping in the car or the metro, you know, uh, which is easily accessible now from Herndon, but, you know, jumping in the, on the metro, get, jumping in your car and driving all the way into D.C. in the evening after work, it's slightly daunting and it takes a lot of your time. So if we can do things locally, I mean, I we... I go into rehearsal. I've had a, a load in at the weekend. Two two events. I'm loading in a theatre, small theatre company, um, and we're going to do Jean Paul Sartre's No Exit. Ah, oh, what a great show! Exactly. You know, and that's in my. We've created a little black box theatre right. of eighty five people. This time we're going to do it in the round, so that's going to be even more oh. interesting. Um, you know. And, but that is bringing theater, you know, into pe people's ac access. Yeah. We, we've got Next Stop Theater. I mean, Next Stop, they do larger shows. They're absolutely, Evan and his team are fabulous. So, I mean, some they did Singing in the Rain. Oh, gosh. It, it, you've got a they long They do way innovative to go. things they there. They do very innovative things. You know, and I think we are all in the area that we we do these things. You know, we're right on the edge, if you will. You've got you've got Loudon and then you've got, you know, you've got... Right. They, they don't have quite as much, but they can get to us very easily. You know, we're only a hop and a skip across the county line. So I work with a group called the Sterling Playmakers. They're coming in to do, funnily enough... The radio show with me. Oh, very yeah, cool. It's very appropriate. Um, but they, I do a cabaret with them once once every two months. And they, they sing. They're magnificent. But they're from Sterling. They're from just across. But that's where people are coming from. That's where they're, they're coming into us from, uh, as well as the people of Herndon. So... You know, it's 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 fabulous. It's exciting. In the, it's so exciting. Well, I think you also benefit from the fact that you have a mayor and a town council oh. who are invested in the arts. Yes, I mean, you, if it's Absolutely. not a priority and it's not intentional, yeah, people will say we don't have the money for that. Well, budgets are nothing more than a reflection of your priorities, right? So yeah. if you prioritize the arts, yes. you know, and Herndon Live has been remarkable too for uh -huh. the town of Herndon. Friday Night Live. Friday Night Live. Friday, Friday Night, Night Live. Live. Yes, it is. P you know, people come from all yeah. over for that as well. Live music. And that's run, think about it, that's run by the Chamber of Commerce. They see the benefit in this. I mean, that's been going for, oh, golly, somebody did tell me, and I want to see. No, I, I'm not even going to guess at it, but it's a long time. It's in the 20-year the mark. That's so, a long time, and for such a small long. and it's for such a small place. Tom and I have been out there before, and it's kind of like its own little wolf trap. Yes, it's like sitting yes, on the lawn is. at wolf trap. Only it's in your own backyard, literally, if you're in the Herndon area. Yeah, it, it's you. I mean, people park by my office, and on a Friday night, and I don't do programming on a Friday night because of I don't do live programming. Right. If artists want to come in and work. They can, and I'm doing rehearsals tomorrow night. But the it, the sound is quite you know yeah. spectacular. Let's <laughs> it, is it, so. it is a smaller town. It is a smaller town, but can, you can hear. Don't it. Even, yeah, you can hear it. <laughs> but the thing is, we've also got the benefit. The other thing is, Catherine, and we saw it this year for the um, 
uh, Herndon Festival. We've actually got that lovely, wonderful, long, skinny, narrow park called mm-hmm. the WNOD Trail. Yeah. And people can cycle up and down there. I mean, again, our mayor and council and our town manager, Bill, they're so forward thinking. It's now they've got a, a grant and it's being lit. It's a smart city, smart streets. And we can we have it lit now. So we can cycle from one side of Herndon to the other and it's lit and it's safe and it's got Wi-Fi the whole way along. Oh, that's uh, so amazing. Yeah, People on their smartphones. <laughs> Not when they're cycling. They've got to be no, safe. but when they're walking. I'm sure they're <laughs> doing selfies or looking for bears or something along the way. But, uh, but I mean, those things all add up to a quality of life that I think in our town of 23,400 and whatever, I think is, is magnificent. I mean, I think people live there, but they play there too. Right. I think they live and play there. You know, it's um, and work now because we've got so many people who you are working do. with that with the Silver Line. There are so many people. We've got so many buildings with the data centers. Yeah, you got data. Yep. And I think Amazon Business Services is out yes, there. Yes, it is. Yes, I it think, is. I think I knew that. And so yep. there, there probably is more. Um, commerce out there than people think Uh because people want to be out where you know again I think the metro is going to make a difference it's hard to say it's kind of hard to look into a crystal bar and say how will it make a difference I think you know high density housing it's well we had a um, one of the local builders actually built a set of uh, um, uh, uh, they took down some old office buildings and built accommodation houses and they were I think they call them two over twos it's like uh, you know double anyway like like garden apartments yeah that's right and with the garden on the roof which right really it's, made it's me what laugh. everybody wants everybody uh, wants a rooftop deck well they sold out so quickly and I was talking to, to a, a council member and I said I I can't believe they're quite expensive and they sold literally just but you can walk to the metro when it opens there, you can walk to the metro from those properties. And I tell you what, I think they're going to double in price. I think they will too. Because the, of the too. accessibility. Because that's the other thing. We are actually, our, our town is a very, a bike friendly. It's a very walkable community. It's got all the, the tick boxes that people want. For that quality of for life. For that quality of life. So for those of you just joining us, you have tuned in to Making Change Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Reed. And tonight we are talking with Joanna Ormisher, who is the president and CEO of Arts Herndon. She's filling us in here on Radio Fairfax about the exciting things that are going on out in Herndon, including the fact that, you know, uh, it's going to change as mm-hmm. more people decide that, Having the quality of a small town life on a metro line so that you've got the opportunity to work any number of places um, but still come home to a walkable, bikeable, small town feel. Yeah. And and if you jump on the metro and, um, yeah, when when it opens up to the airport, you jump on the metro, you're uh, one stop on and you're in Dulles Airport International. I tell you, that's oh. going to change everything. You know, Dulles Airport, and I have to explain this to people who are not familiar with Washington, is the one of the few international airports in the world that doesn't offer public transportation. One of the few in the mm-hmm. world. And so it's taken us like 55 years to get this built. And it is really, of all the things that are going to change the landscape literally changed the landscape. Mm. It's going to be a. It's going to be people getting to the airport. Yeah. On the metro. Yeah. I mean, I when I go home to England, I leave my car at the office and I Uber over. It's a ten dollar Uber ride. I know. Tom and I so, Uber too. Yeah, but it's so it's so close. I mean, yep. the metro opening is going to be a game changer. I think without it will a be. doubt. Without I think a it doubt. will be too. Um, you know, and you've got the children's the, um, the children's science center is moving to the corner of yeah. uh, twenty eight and seven. Yeah, 
and there's there's all kinds of development going on yep. there, which is not that far from you either. No, nope. I mean we've got a very vibrant chamber of commerce, the Dulles Chamber of Commerce, and then with the smaller offshoots of I host the Herndon uh, Chamber, we've got the Sterling Chamber, we've got the uh, uh, what is it? You've Chantilly got, you've and got, Centerville. You do. They're all part of our community, our Dulles Chamber of Commerce. And we we keep abreast of all these things. We all talk together. Um, and we're all, it, there's always something going on with the chamber. I mean, it's They've wonderful. got committees too. In fact, we just had hmm. the um, president of the chamber at our Rotary Club meeting like right. two weeks ago. Right. Yeah, and he was talking about they have a committee that meets about Sterling. They have a committee that meets mm-hmm. about Route 28. They have very localized, they were encouraging, he was encouraging us, you know, to use the power of Rotary to help convene these meetings. He said yep. they've been enormously successful. Loads of people mm-hmm. show up more than they expect because people really are interested in their own communities. And well, how we to have engage. something called Metro Monday. And in fact, the last meeting, I couldn't go, but uh, Sharon Bulliver was there and Sharon was talking about the future. Um, and it, it, it is, it's an exciting future. And in fact, I right now working with the chamber of which I am a member, um, I'm pulling together and I have an intern helping me this summer working on getting um, a chamber of arts and culture. What an exciting idea. Well, how innovative is that? That's very innovative. Isn't it? It is. It's, I don't know anywhere else. And I've Googled yeah. all over the place. And I haven't found anywhere else. So working with John Boylan, who is our, our chamber um, CEO, um, this is what he and I are doing. We're putting this together so that we will be able to work. So that will be businesses and the arts working in tandem. You know, they'll be able to access everything that the businesses access. They are businesses. They might be mini businesses. Some of them are one man businesses if it's an artist. But business is business. And we need to encourage nurture and help those businesses because that's what we do in northern virginia true and i think too many people blow off the arts not realizing that it's what makes a town a destination place absolutely you know otherwise it's just a a vanilla flavored suburb or a bedroom community yes it is if you don't have events that draw people into your city to stay, to walk around, Mm -hmm. you know, to explore the places to eat, to explore the shops that are there. But they're not just going to come. Most people drive through. Everybody drives through. I can tell you everybody drives through Fairfax City. You've got to give them a reason to stop and stay, right? But the thing is, it's not just about them coming and being an observer and being an audience. They've also got to be a participator. So... If we have a band, Mm -hmm. they want members in a band. So if you, say, played the flute, I don't know if you did, you might have, (laughs) but say you played a flute and all of a sudden you've moved into a community that has a community band, then you've got a place to go to. You know, that's true. And that's like the rest and chorus too. That's right. And, I mean, it's like artists. They want something to do. I start in September. We're on a bit of a hiatus during the summer because it's summer camps right. time. You know, it, it's slightly different. In September, I was looking at my my schedule today. Every day, every day except Sunday, I have an artist teaching an art class in my center. Every day. That's and phenomenal. that will be some in the middle of the day and some in well. Every daytime is taken up and most of the evenings. I mean, I am blown away by that. And that's people participating, people wanting to do something, people wanting to create art. And they're all different. I mean, it's acrylics, it's pastels, you name it. They're all doing something different. And I love it because I watch them. I I'm just, I love it. But the thing is, Catherine, it's what we're trying to do, I believe. And it's like I do an improv night oh that's exciting we were uh, talking about that too improv groups talking you about that with should Alex and definitely Sarah. well next spring i'm in, i'm actually hosting the northern virginia improvicon which is all the groups get together um and then sort of battle it out so it's 
it's exciting to ha see that happening. And I, I think, and that's, again, it's participation. So when we come back, I'll tell you what I'm going to do with it as well. <laughs> that's right. I mean, we have so much left to talk about, but you're, you're right that people have to both create the content and be consumers of the content. And sometimes you're in one group and mm -hmm. sometimes you're in the other group. Yes. But that's what heightens the engagement in a community um, so that artists have an audience. Yes. But, they, but then you get to be an audience for a lot of other people. And when we come back after our break, I do want to talk about your new space. Anybody yeah. who's been to the art space in Herndon, and I have been there a number of times, are impressed with, with the art that is in such a small space. But you're <laughs> about to get an upgrade. I am. A upgrade in a very big way. So I hope those listening will join us after our break for Making Change Radio. Join me in exploring and enjoying the Great American Songbook. We bring back the wonderful voices of Rosemary Clooney, Bing Crosby, Ella Fitzgerald, Judy Garland, and Frank Sinatra, just to name a few. And we hear some who are still singing for us today. So come listen as the melody lingers on. The melody lingers on every Wednesday at 11 a.m. only on Radio FFX. Join Mike Delaney Wednesday evenings at 9 for a weekly meeting with the chairman of the board, a true American idol, Mr. Francis Albert Sinatra. That's Simply Sinatra, Wednesday nights at 9 only on Radio Fairfax. Tune in to the music that has shaped America's most dynamic art form called jazz. Join me, Robin Clemens, on Jazz at Club Paradise on Saturdays from 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time. Listen in and hear recordings from the legendary masters of jazz and releases from young players who are taking the music forward. Join me, Robin Clemens, Jazz at Club Paradise, on Saturdays from 12 to 1 Eastern Standard Time on Radio Fairfax. Welcome to Isla Earth. To the world at large, global warming is anything but a game. But if you happen to be on the Internet, it can be. That's where you'll find a game called Climate Challenge. Produced by the BBC, it lets you be president of the European nations. Your job as Prez is to pass environmental laws and react to crises caused by climate change, all the while staying popular enough with voters to remain in office. The data driving the game are actual climate change projections from 2006, provided by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, and most of the policies players can work with came from real government policy documents. But the producers of the climate change game want to make sure people know it wasn't meant to accurately predict future events related to global warming. Their goal was to provide players with a fun and challenging way to learn more about the impact of climate change and options governments have for dealing with it. So next time you're online, why not give it a try? With all the insights you'll gain by playing, there's no way you won't be a winner. And the Earth, too. Plug in and play by following discovery links for today's program at islaearth.org. Isla Earth is produced by the Catalina Island Conservancy with support from its Fund for a Sustainable Planet, because Earth is an island. Keeping the First Amendment alive. We are Radio Fairfax, Fairfax County's public access and internet radio station. We're not just another radio station. Well, yeah, we are. Radio Fairfax. I'm your host, Catherine Reed, and tonight we're talking with Joanna Ormisher, who is the president and CEO of Arts Herndon here on Radio Fairfax. Thank you so much for being here. When we went on our break, we promised our listeners <laughs> we would be talking about your fabulous new space, which is quite a step up from yes. Arts Herndon. 
Yes, it is. Well, right now we currently have and pack a lot into about 1,700 square feet. Uh, we will be moving into a transition space for the next two years, two to two and a half years. And then we are building, in the meantime, an 18,000 square foot art centre, which is, it, it, it's, it's huge. It's huge. It's not going to be huge enough, of course, because there's, as we all know, you grow it gets to filled fit up. This. Of exactly. course you do. Of course exactly. you do. But you know that is quite an upgrade. Seventeen hundred square feet to yep. eighteen thousand, yep. and that you know, and that is a commitment on the part of the town of Herndon yes. to say that you're going to center the arts yes. in a very big way. I mean, people are going to in yeah. a small town. I mean, I'm downtown Herndon. For those of you who've been there, imagine a building with eighteen thousand square feet of space devoted solely to the arts. It's, well, yes, and you're right. What What's happening is what is currently the parking, parking mm -hmm. area, the municipal parking lot, that's going to be built on. Uh, so adjoining the WNOD trail, you're going to have a... Um, you're going to have a, a, a new downtown. You're going to have 261 par um, uh, housing... Uh, apartments and condos and townhouses right then you're going to have an enormous parking deck which is going to be ringed by all these houses so you're not going to even see the parking deck yeah. which is great uh, that's what they're doing if you yeah. i don't know if you've been out to scout on the circle because yes. they're finally building you, you everybody saw this enormous parking deck going yeah. they're like wow that's a huge parking deck yeah. but now they're finally building the structures around it so you don't see it from the circle absolutely and it's important that they build i mean in in herndon's case because they have an enormous number of people who come in to cycle from herndon and to you know the, we have to have the parking deck that will be the first thing that's built um and then it'll be ringed by all these beautiful apartments now and then the new arts centre is going to anchor the whole thing. Now, I've been around shopping centres and downtowns for long enough to know that this is innovative. And this is one of the things that really piqued my interest. Um, the developer, which is Comstock, uh, out of Reston, they are incredible. They have got, I've been working with them, I've been working with Comstock and the town uh, to 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 push this forward and I am just so impressed when I look at the the work we've done already we've got an art walk going through the middle of that center an art walk with all sorts of things we've we've brought in people from the history organization artists myself the planners and and Comstock we've all been around the table talking about it so we know what we're going to do there I've d written up some RFPs to buy to put out a, a call for art for on behalf of Comstock. Um, so they, it's art, art, art. They're talking about art. They're looking for art. Um, th you know, Comstock have been very, very um, innovative in their um, building or their helping of the um, the Silver Line. And they've uh, um, a lady called Maggie Parker sits on their art board, the um, Oh, gosh, I can't remember. It's not Wilmarta. Um, but anyway, how, how they've built it, how Metro have built it. Uh, so there's art built into the Metro line even. So it, it, people are and, looking And you know, the thing it. is, that's true in other countries. Oh, yes. I mean, if people it, travel it, to it other is. countries, yes. when you go into subway, Metro, tube yep. stations, there's all kinds of art. And there's art all over. Like you go to Montreal, yeah. there's art all over the buildings. Yes. There's like art every place you go, there's art. Yeah. I mean... People expect to see art. That's kind of different. It is different in them. It is it's different, different here. in this area. Yeah, it really it's, is. But we're trying to redress the balance. And I think, yes, when I go home to England, I see art everywhere. And sort of I used to commission pieces of art for my different shopping centers that I worked in, uh, that I was, I was the marketing consultant for. But... You know, it, it's a different mindset and it's a different way of being funded as well. It's much more fundamental. Catherine, art is always in the, the big budget, uh, whereas here it's not. It's as you, I think you said it uh, just a minute ago that, you know, the, the town of Herndon gets it. They do. Their town, their 
the, uh, the council members get it. Um, and therefore they fund and it. And therefore they, they facilitate as well as fund, but they facilitate. And that's more, almost more important than funding, actually. True, because you uh, have to have collaborators and partners. You no sure one can do, do this. Nobody can you do this sure by do. themselves. You sure do. And when you talk to, you know, the planners in, when I, I mean, I work with the planners there as well, they get it. They're very, very open to. They hold some of their meetings in Arts Herndon, so they they like to come and talk to I've us. I've been to events there too because yeah. a lot of oh, people. Oh, it's fun events. It's it's great because it's a space that holds a fair number of mm-hmm. people, and yeah. it's affordable to to use yes, it for an it event. Is. And so for people who need a place to hold an event, this is a great alternative. Come and see me. Come I and know. talk to I, me, please. People should remember that. It's, uh, and you get great surroundings because you always have beautiful art. To art look. Yeah, yeah. People get to look at the art. No matter what yeah. event you're there for, everybody ends up looking at the exactly, art. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, I think it, it, it comes within our, um, it comes within all of our, our lives whatever we do we should always be looking for something beautiful you know and i think the more we can build into towns these days you know it gets away from the the banality of it all it's true you i know? mean that some so sometimes the architecture well so let's talk about the mosaic district yeah. and you know the mosaic district has been hugely successful because it's hide and city housing open spaces restaurants movie theater and every if you if you go there, there's such a vibe on the street. There's families. There's yep. people walking their dogs. I mean, there's just activity there all the time. Yes. It's pleasant. It's clean. But, you know, it was built out of a whole piece of cloth. You can't do that in an existing city or an existing town. Mm-hmm. You basically have to work with what you already have. You're not going to mow the whole, you're not going to plow the whole thing under. No. But that gives an opportunity then because constraints are not a terrible thing. Constraints can actually bring out the most innovative qualities when you can't start from whole cloth. Well, I think one of the things in Herndon, for sure, is the fact that they have murals everywhere. And that has been the first time I went in there. I I mean, I've been to Belfast, so I I see and other towns you see murals on walls. Everywhere. Everywhere. Montreal is another one. I was really surprised. And I did a big, last year in uh, the city of Fairfax, I did a mural slam in the middle of downtown in the park. And it was fascinating to see people's reaction. You know, they either walked past quickly going like, oh dear, what's that? (laughs) Or they were fascinated. It didn't, it, it, and I've still got some of those murals uh, stored, and they were wonderful. But it was trying to show people what you can do. And you were easing people into it, which I might add is something that some people de- desperately need to be eased into a different way of thinking. For those who are just joining us, we, you are tuned into Making Change Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Reed. And joining me here on Radio Fairfax tonight is Joanna Ormisher who's president and CEO of Arts Herndon. So let's talk about how people feel about murals. I go to Richmond, and there's a lot of murals in Richmond, too. Yeah. But some people kind of look at them like they're tattoos, <laughs> like we're tattooing the buildings, and some people are not into tattoos. Yeah. That's how I, I kind of, in my, my mindset, I'm thinking, is that what you think? Is that what you think, that murals are not art, that they're just graffiti or somebody tattooed something on a building, and that's not really mm. art? Because I think there's... A group of people who have that mindset. I think it's art, but I know it's art. I love, I love murals. I think they can brighten up. They can make you smile. They can diffuse situations, which they have done in Northern Ireland, in Belfast, for sure. Um, But they're just a smile on a wall. Come on. A smile on a wall. I agree with you. You know, they're clever. <laughs> yeah, or they they're, are. Or they've done something remarkable, and you're like, oh, my gosh, look at that. I mean, again, traveling in European cities, you, when you see, especially when they've done it on older buildings that, you know, probably need to be rehabbed, yeah. and the quickest way to rehab a building that's not in very good shape is to paint a smile on it yep. or a flower on it or a scene on it. Well, it's quite funny because I've been asked by a property company to go and w- look at doing three murals in one of their shopping centers, not too far from where I am. And I, they came to me. I didn't need to go and badger them. Or They said, we, this is what 
what we'd like. And I thought, good Lord, this is a turnaround. Um, and I think I think it's I think it's interesting the way people. But always art is in the eye of the beholder. True. So what one person says, wow, that's fantastic. Somebody else will turn around and go, yeah, not so, not so. I would sooner see, I don't know, whatever they want on the, on the wall. It's, but there's some very, very clever and innovative, innovative, sorry, um, mural artists out there. Um, we were in uh, Austin, Texas. There's this one. There's this one side of a building where people yes. always go and get pictures taken. Yes, you know. So of course, Tom, I t- went and took a picture of Tom. People line up there on the corners on Congress Street in Austin because people want their picture taken in, in front of this particular building. And there's interactive art in D.C. They've actually done temporary art where people can go and leave a message or they ask a question and people answer the question. And you're thinking. What an amazing idea to read what other people have written and yeah. to write your own thoughts. It makes there's such a community feel about it. even if it's temporary. Yeah. There's such a feeling of community engagement around that. Thing is, you've also got you know I'm I'm just being the two edged sword here. You've also got to remember that sometimes that can be abused, and you've got to keep a fairly close eye on that. True, you know because you don't want anything offensive. True, even in another language, you don't want <laughs> anything offensive. So you've got to keep an eye on it. But yes, I think where you have something like that, you've got less likelihood of. Bad graffiti. I do, too, because I think the community has a tendency to police itself. Yes. You know, yes. in other words, if people have tried to do something positive and they expect positive comments or they expect sharing, it's the community who will mm. come come back and take out something that is not appropriate or is not appropriate for the space or the project. But it was quite funny because uh, for Herndon Festival, I do a project called Hands on Art, which is for, based on based for children. And so this year we sort of duly went along and we were in our new space because they've moved it in readiness for the town centre development. And um, it was quite interesting. I thought, oh, right, I'm going to get a big, big mural, you know, sort of big eight foot, 16 foot mural so kids can colour it. Yeah. Guess what? It wasn't the kids that colored. it was the adults. It was the adults. <laughs> adults were standing there with their sort of their crayons and what have you, having a wonderful time. And that may that was again, that's a smile. I tell you, that's so, the law also the law of unintended consequences. <laughs> in that it's like we did this for children and then the adults came. Yeah. Uh, and but why it was not? Good, and why not? They found their inner artist. But I will say <laughs> this is very interesting about the things we do for children. You know, when children are very small, they uh, they embrace the idea that of course they're an artist. Mm-hmm. You know, every five year old who has a crayon and a paper, you know, and they're like, draw your house and draw your family, and every just kid is like, well, of course I'm an artist. <laughs> and then some somehow as they go along in their educational experience, people have judgments all over their art, and you find then then the kids are sorted out as to yeah. the ones who are told they're good and the ones who are not told they're good. And then suddenly people are deciding, and again, I will go back time and time again to what Alex Bulova had to say about the fundamental issue of what is art and who gets to decide what is art and who gets to decide who an artist is. Absolutely. In fact, and I'm trying to remember his name and it's gone right out of my head, uh, as so often it does. (laughs) Uh, There is a very famous educator and he he's a, he's a Brit, and Kenneth Robinson. Yes, yes, the TED Talk. Ken, we and beat the creativity right out of ab- kids. We do public education beats the creativity right because out of kids. public educate and Ken is wonderful. He came to talk to us down in uh, Richmond, funnily enough, with the uh, Virginians for the Arts, <gasps> and he is. He said, and I, I read his book from cover to cover more than once. He's, as, we are, as we grow older, we have less ability to do art. We get embroiled in our day-to-day lives, in making money, obviously, because we have to live and we have to bring our children up. But, but what we started as a child with giving you a pencil or a pen or whatever and make, just making a, a picture... That gets less as we get older. But then it turns and it changes. 
And then when retirement sets in, so we've got this to look forward to. True. As we all retire, then, and I see many, many people. In fact, I've got a, a, a great project at the moment. There's a lady called B. Ryan, and she's 93. Wow. She's an artist. Um, she is, she's, she's not doing as well as she was, um, but she has given her, her collection of art books to Arts Herndon. And we are, we are utilizing them to make money for our children's art scholarships. Um, so anybody who wants to get books, they're really great. Come, come in to see me in Arts Herndon. But B is 93. I remember her 16 years ago exhibiting in Old Town Hall in Fairfax. She's an amazing artist, a and, wonderful and woman. And you point, you point, so I happen to know a, a number of people now that they are retired. Yes. Spend their time painting, spend their time painting. And in, the, and in some cases, they've gotten back to it. They did it. And then they let it drop. They were raising families, and they had full-time jobs. Now they're getting back to it. But people should remember Grandma Moses did not start painting until she was 65, and Winston Churchill did not start painting until his 40s. And he actually was a pretty good painter, he, and he loved painting. But it was not something he did early. It's something he did later. And this is what I find, again, so interesting about Alex Bulova working with um, Ollie, which is the uh, Osher okay. Lifelong, Lifelong Learning, Learning, because that group started out – is a reader's theater. It was just a collection of people who wanted to do theater, and they started out as reader's theater, and then they expanded, and then they expanded, and now Alex has gone into work with them. And I'm like, and why shouldn't they be doing theater as retired people? Who says you can't start your theatrical experience in your retirement? Yeah. Well, in fact, if you remember, Theater of the First Amendment actually had people from Ollie, and they were attached to George Mason University Versity, Theater right, right, right. and Center for the Visual and Performing Arts. And they were attached to um, uh, to the theatre, and the um, and they had some people from Ollie in some of their productions for sure. And that, yes, yeah. I mean, I mean so I think why we have not? To, we have to kind of kind of blow up our expectations for those of you who are just joining us. You are listening to Making Change Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Reed, and my guest tonight is Joanna Ormisher, who is the president and CEO of Arts Herndon here on Radio Fairfax. So when we talk about making change, this is, you know, changing people's minds, yeah. Yeah. changing people's perspective. I don't know what people when you say, well, making change. How do you make change? Well, you change people's hearts and minds and their perspective, yeah. and you help, you help people to understand that perhaps if they looked at it from a different angle, mm-hmm. they'd see something different. But I think you also give them, and this is what I, I am – personally I'm very excited about being in Herndon and with Arts Herndon is you also give them the opportunity to change you know you give them the opportunity so it's 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 one thing to say well we can make change but we've got to facilitate people accessibility it's accessibility accessibility. and I and something else too a lot of people are reluctant because by the time you get to the latter stage of your life, not like past five, you realize that people are judging you and you get sensitive to the fact that you don't want to be rejected and you you don't want to be told that what you have to offer is an art or isn't good enough art. And so you think about Emily Dickinson, whose poems were found in a drawer after she passed away, yeah. and you're thinking, what did the world lose by somebody who would not share her poems? Well, now you're talking about poems, and that's something else we do in Arts Herndon. And we are one of the very, very few. And we do an open mic night for poetry and prose oh, on amazing. a monthly be- basis. Yeah, We had the, um, from where... Alex Bulliver's just come from. Uh, the uh, poet laureate, um, Henry Hart, is based in William, William and Mary. Mary. Yeah. He came to Arts Herndon and did a reading one night. But then other people stand up and read as well. And it's, an, it's so we have readers and then it becomes an open mic. And you'll be surprised how many older people are getting up and reading their poetry. I mean, you've, we've got young people, but we've got older people as well who have become creative so, and are so very excited Can about I, it. like, have a wish list? Yes. Because, you know, as long as you're here and we're talking about, like, 
Catherine, if you could wave a magic wand and have anything you wanted, what would it be? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Um, <laughs> what I would love to do is a moth story hour because the only one right now is in D.C. at the Lincoln Theater. We don't do the moth story hour out here where it's easier to get to. You have to go into D.C. The moth story hour is amazing, and it's just people standing up and telling a story. You don't have to have anything special. You just stand up and tell your story. Okay. Can I just say a little plug then? On September the 21st, Better Said Than Done are going to do a storytelling evening. Ta-da. With an open mic. Ta-da. So you could come along, Catherine. I want so to do Jessica that. Jessica and her storytellers are going to come along and do a storytelling evening. September the 21st. It's a Saturday. And... Then we will do an open mic for anybody who wants to come and do their own storytelling. Yeah, and see that's what's so you great. Know, that's what's so great about the moth is just yeah. you know they, actually what they do is you get five minutes. You, that's they it. pick your name out of a hat really, and you're just prepared to go up there and and tell your story. The other thing I would like, since you asked me if I could have anything I wanted, um, the Iowa Writers Workshop is in Iowa, <laughs> you know, and it would be amazing to have a community that actually, you know, develops writers. I mean, why, and why couldn't that be heard? And why couldn't it be any place that says, we would love to have a program where we bring our, our writers in residence and we support them and there's a community, a colony, when you think about how you develop writers in general. But, you know, the Iowa Writers Workshop has a reputation for a reason. They turn out amazing writers. But why do are there so few places that do that because that means the accessibility the accessibility for these programs is so limited i think the thing is one of, one of the biggest things and i i run on a shoestring i mean the, it, 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 i don't even need to gild a lily i at arts herndon run on a shoestring um we need money we need a lot of money, um, don't we all? But the thing is, I want to be innovative, as you can tell by doing the yeah, various you're, you're things doing that we're doing. Yeah, you're doing lots of amazing things. Um, but to do those things, you need to have finance. And the thing is, I don't think the, I don't think that it's a chicken and egg situation. You've actually got to do the work to be able to get the people in who want to sh to support you. True. Now, this is where I see tying ambition and innovation to people who have money, like Amazon. So it's kind of like, wow, Amazon picked us, and I'm feeling so special. But, you know, if Amazon really wanted to do something besides just commerce, perhaps what they could do is fund something like a writer's workshop where they're doing business in HQ2. Absolutely. And then, you know, that, you know George Mason was un university was built. Because the developers in this area wanted a Northern Virginia university. Like, they're like, there's no major university in Northern Virginia, and we want to build this place to be amazing, so we have to have a university. And they put their money where their ambition was. And so you look at the big developers here, mm -hmm. they are the ones who put Mason on the map. But they built the buildings, and the students came, and the faculty came, and the programs came, and all the things came. And it is a remarkable university in a very short amount of time. But... You know, you had to have people with intent and money. And I'm just saying and we could vision. And vision. We have and to plant vision. the seed and you have to you have to ask. Mm. So just, you know Well, don't forget, but but you will let me let me remind you, my web address is www.artsherndon.org. So anybody who wants to get a hold of me and say, I'd love to start a wor writer's workshop in Herndon, please, www.artsherndon.org will always find me. Um, but there are many things that we can be doing to get big business and get businesses involved in the arts. And I've got one pretty innovative way of doing it. Um, and I so we can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and I think, you know, everybody's looking. But I think yeah. the, the biggest thing is you have to make the ask. Yes, you I know? agree with you. You have to make the ask. A lot of us wish for things all day long. And we don't actually say this is the vision or the initiative or the plan. Mm -hmm. And what we need from you is this to make it reality. Yeah. 
So I just want to thank you, Joe Ormisher, for coming out here and talking to us. <laughs> it's been very enlightening. I am very excited. I, I, I'm. It surpasses what I thought was going on out there, which I haven't oh. talked to you in a while. And so it exceeds my expectations or my in every way. And I encourage everybody who's listening to the show to go out to the website, find the events, and then head out to Herndon. This has been Making Change Radio. I'm your host, Catherine Reed, and our guest tonight was Joanna Ormisher of Arts Herndon. 